What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. We got to talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder man and not about the thing you're thinking of. Get your head out of the gutter. We got to talk about Chet Holmgren man. Chet Holmgren has been an absolute stud for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Obviously he was supposed to be a rookie last year. Technically he's a rookie this year and he has been absolutely phenomenal. I wanted to do a rebuild. I don't even know what we're going to be doing in this video entirely just yet but I know for a fact I want to talk about Chet Holmgren. So let's just go ahead jump in and do this Oklahoma City Thunder rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like in this one, and of course, subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. We're on the road to 50,000 subs, and if you are new around here and you don't know who I am, hello, my name is Crushables. I'm a rebuilder here on 2K, and the way I like to do rebuilds on my channel is I try to do them as realistically as possible. So if you enjoy realism and want to try to like learn stuff about maybe being somewhat realistic, maybe you don't want to learn from me, that's totally fine, but... If you want, if you enjoy that type of content, I'm your guy. So, as I said, man, what I did to go ahead and start this off, we are using Joe Kelmer's share scenario uh, for this video, by the way. Chet Holmgren was not at 87 when this share scenario first loaded up. I boosted his overall. The man has been so freaking good. So, I want Chet and Shea to be the guys going forward. He's already showed that he could potentially be the number two guy on a championship team next to Shea Gilgis Alexander, which is nice. Josh Giddy, not totally sure what I want to do with him. I'm going to be completely transparent with you. He played on Saturday, uh, even though, you know, obviously the whole thing was going on. So I don't know if the Thunder aren't taking it very seriously or they have heard details from him where they believe him or whatever. I don't know what's going on entirely. Obviously, in this scenario, they have him out for uh, one or two weeks. And I don't even think the NBA has said anything either about what they're going to do with Josh Giddy, other than that they are, you know, looking into the situation. So... Maybe we could just trade him because his trade value would probably be really good. Uh, I don't know if, you know, Josh Giddy is the best fit next to Shea and Chet anyway. So I think we can go ahead and maybe just move on from him at the deadline. I don't really want to necessarily want to rush it. Obviously not the most realistic thing in the world. So uh, I know I started the video by saying that. But uh, just for this video today, I think we might end up doing that. We'll see. And of course, you have like Jalen Williams, Lou Dort, Mitchich, Isaiah Joe. It's a really fun team in Oklahoma City. Uh, so this is your rotation right now, but obviously with Josh Giddy being in or out for personal reasons, this is what it would look like. So we got Shea, Kaysen Wallace, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams. I actually love Lou Dort as a starter on this team. He makes a ton of sense. If we can move him down to the two without him going down in overall, that'd be awesome. But I think he goes down quite a bit because then what we could do is we can run Lou Dort at the two, which I think he's a perfect three and D wing to have next to Shea, of course. And then you can have obviously Kaysen Wallace probably come off the bench. Jalen Williams can slide over to the three, which also could work there. And then maybe we can find a power forward or a center. Maybe move Chet to the four if we wanted to. It just kind of depends on what we find. So, but for now, I'll go ahead and leave it as is. We're just going to go ahead and simulate maybe till the deadline or maybe till the end of the season. We'll just, we'll, we'll kind of fill it out. We'll see what we're feeling at the deadline. Of course, today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that's available on mobile or desktop. Price picks, this is how it works. You go on to Price picks, they have all kinds of sports outside of just NBA. They have NFL, college football, soccer, all kinds of sports. This is how it works. It's simply you against the projections. If you want to go, they got all kinds of stats you can choose from as well. So let's say we want to go to three pointers made and we think Schroeder's going to make uh, two threes tomorrow. We go over on that. And we think Quinn Grimes is going to go under two threes. We go less on that. Two players being three times your entry. All the way up to six players being 25 times your entry. I've been using Price Picks since 2021. It's a ton of fun. And man, as I'm recording this, the Bears and uh or Bears and Vikings game just got done. And boy, oh boy, I gotta show you something phenomenal. Uh not that one, not that one, but um or sorry, those are my open entries. This is what I'm looking at. Past entries. Look at this banger right here, man. It don't happen very often, but when it does, it feels phenomenal. So you want to sign up for price picks. Link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHWILLS to match your first deposit, do first deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. Thank you to Price Picks for sponsoring today's video. And a tool I've been using on Price Picks is DGF's correlation and also optimizer tool. Basically, how the correlation works, it compares lines across the industry and it gives you the plays right in front of your face. Makes it really easy. You just kind of scroll down to what kind of plays you want to play. If you want to go a two pick entry, it'll tell you whether or not you should put something in. If you want to go to a five pick entry, there's like five things here. Then those are the uh, entries you can place in there. But more importantly, where I just got that last slip I just showed you guys that uh, went six for six. I got it from DGF's correlation tool. How the correlation tool works, it basically gives you the slips right in front of you. You play them. The game name of the game here is volume. And uh, if you've been playing on this correlation tool, correlation tool since August 18th, it is up 509 units right now. If you want to go ahead and check it out, link is down in the description below. They also have a YouTube channel if you want to, you know, look more into it and kind of explain, have it explained to you a little bit better. I'm not the best at explaining this, but I've been using it and it's pretty good. So... 
go ahead and check it out. Links down in the description below. And like I said, they also have a YouTube channel if you want to learn more about it. So at the end of year number one, Chet Holmgren makes an all defensive second team, which is actually really cool to see. No Shea, unfortunately, I believe on any of these all NBA teams, which sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, we end up as a 60 in the West, so we are in the playoffs, which is great. But if we take a look at the player stats, uh, it was 20 or 22 from Shea and then 18 from Chet Holmgren, 18 from Jalen Williams, not too bad, and 11 from Isaiah Joe. Uh, so we'll definitely take this. Chet shot 35% from three. Jalen Williams with uh, 34 and Shea 32. So yeah, shooting is not the best. Lou Dort didn't even shoot the best either. Um, so shooting definitely needs improved. Obviously, Isaiah Joe, uh, solid shooter for them. But other than that, I decided not to rush anything as far as trading Giddy at the trade deadline. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just simulate the playoffs uh, with him. I don't even think he's in the rotation right now, which is totally fine with me. Again, I don't know how, I don't know what's going to happen in that situation. I don't know if any of us really know. Maybe the man's not guilty. Maybe he is. Who really knows? Uh, somebody occur around against Minnesota, though, without him. Let's see how good we can do. And we are going to actually beat them in round one. So that's off to a fantastic start. And we're going to lose to the Lakers round two, though, which is fine because I can put my fingerprints on this team in this offseason. Of course, we also might land a top pick. The Rockets are a team that I'm not seeing here. Their pick is top four protected, though. So we may not get it for that scenario. We'll see if it ends up in the top four or not. So draft lottery time. This is a huge night for us. So Houston's pick is projected or no, it's not. It's projected to be the fifth overall pick. So pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, Rockets top four protected. So, and we also have Utah's pick, which is at 11. So let's see what happens. Uh, we actually get the Rockets pick at six. So we get the sixth overall pick and 11. So we have two lottery picks. Obviously, Sam Presti has stacked up a bunch of draft picks. So uh, I don't think we can trade Josh Giddy before draft night. I'm pretty sure he's going to have his contract, obviously, uh, have to be accepted for it. Actually, no, he's under contract already, I think. So we can go ahead and we can get a trade going right now with Josh Giddy's salary. Uh, we also have Lou Dort's salary still. So we're going to scan the league, man. Let's go ahead and get a banger trade started. Obviously, Shea and Chet are two. I'm pretty sure I can trade Josh Giddy right now. It looks like it. I'm surprised I didn't have to accept an option, but we don't have to, which is phenomenal. So uh, we have Lou Dort's contract. We have uh, Kenneth Williams' contract. So we got the money. Uh, Davis Berton's contract is gone as well. So let's go make a banger trade. We got all these draft draft picks. We have Josh Giddy now as a trade asset. There should be no one around the league that's off limits. Obviously, I want to keep somewhat in the realistic ballpark, but... The sky is a limit on who we could get because of how many assets that the Thunder have. So I'm going to try for a banger here and a banger that's going to fit this team as well. I don't want to just like go out there and get someone that's not going to fit next to Che and Chet because those are the two guys we are building around 1000%. All right. So I'm looking around the league at guys that would fit next to these two and it's not easy. I mean, obviously I could go out there right now and I could go off her all that I want for Zion or LaMelo and I could make that happen. That That's not a problem, but it's just I'm kind of trying to think about are the pieces going to fit? I'm also thinking about the Grizzlies with like Jaron Jackson Jr. and Bane, like two guys that I think would be phenomenal to have on this team. Uh, I don't know if Josh Giddy is someone though that the Grizzlies would be all that excited about. They have John Morant. I mean, maybe they'd take a chance on Giddy, but I'm not really sure that's the greatest fit in the world. So uh, if it wasn't for that, I would consider it. But unfortunately, it just isn't the greatest fit for them. Uh, but another guy that, uh, you know, Lord marketing on the Utah jazz is interesting, um, which obviously he'd be a great fit as well. Uh, but I'm kind of settling on the Brooklyn guy and Mikel bridges. I mean, he just fits so perfectly for what we want as a third guy. He's not going to score too much. He can play defense, play shooting guard or small forward. He's just the perfect fit here. And it's kind of what I want in this scenario. It's not the dream guy that I want. It's not like the dream scenario. I mean, Brandon Ingram is also someone interesting. If we could get him from uh new orleans if we wanted to go all in on brandon ingram we'd swap josh giddy for ingram or something like that maybe they think zion and giddy would be better i don't know so ingram also is interesting someone i don't trade for all that often but not really sure i, I think mikhail bridges is the best fit with these two guys easily and we have the assets for it obviously uh it shouldn't even like take too much obviously the nets in real life want a like a ton for him i think giddy being in this trade uh for mikhail bridges it definitely sounds weird to think about but if for whatever reason, this Giddy thing, like, I, I mean, I don't know if the Thunder would just cut him or maybe there would be a team that's still like, hey, we'll take him. Like, Giddy from Mikael Bridges, I think that could, like, reset the Brooklyn Nets. And this, like, I know I, I know what I said at the beginning, but this trade probably isn't going to happen, right? It's not going to, this isn't going to happen. This is unrealistic, and I'm very aware of that. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we do go off the rails. Forgot to mention that up top, obviously, so... Um, but if I traded Giddy in like 19 and 11 for Mikel, I don't think they could turn that down. We keep six in this scenario. Uh, so Giddy heads to Brooklyn. And he gets his own team. 
Don't know what's going to happen with the man in real life anyway. They're going to agree to that. Mikel Bridges, to me, perfect fit. Really can't ride it home any better. Perfect fit. Whether we play him the two or the three, he is perfect next to Shea and Chet as the third guy. Uh, as a team that's ready to go compete next year. So I'm very happy with Mikel Bridges coming in. And I can't express that enough. And we still get to draft a six. So one caller is going to go Alex Sar, Stefan, Nicola Topic, Ron Holland. And then we can take uh, Donovan Klingon. We could take Justin Edwards, Buzelis. Um, I think I'm going to take Buzelis. Someone I don't take all that often, but uh, he usually doesn't fall to me. So we'll go ahead and take him here and feel very, very good about that. So welcome to Oklahoma City, Buzelis. Uh, we'll figure out where to play him, whether it's off the probably playing off the bench uh, at first. Zach Eady will sign as well. Uh, player options, Aaron Wiggins. I'm going to accept that. And then I'm going to decline Burton's or Burton's, however you want to say it. And Pokoshevsky will extend the offer on as well. Uh, free agency. We got Alexis Poko. I, I just have a feeling I probably pissed off a lot of people with that Mikel Bridges trade. But man, it's just like Mikel is such a great fit next to these two guys for what I want. So uh, now what I think we can do, though, is what we, we can do this. And uh, we can do this. So we're going to slide some things over. So now... Right now, Mitch is our backup point guard. I'm not really sold on him anyway. Can I move Casey Wallace to point guard? He actually goes down, which is fine. But I'm cool with playing him at point guard. We'll have a secondary position be the two. Because I know for a fact I've done this in the past. Jalen Williams goes up like crazy. I think the last time I did this, he goes up quite a bit at the small forward spot. If you move him to small forward, which the man is 6'5". So, yeah, he's up to an 85 at small forward. So, we're moving him to small forward. Uh, his secondary position could be, I guess, power forward still since he was playing that. But... So now we'll have Isaiah Joe right now is starting two, but what we'll do is we'll move Mikel to two. So now we'll have a starting start right now, a starting backcourt of Shea and Mikel, which is amazing. Isaiah Joe as the backup is great. Lou Dort off the bench. Buzelis, uh we'll probably slide him to the four. I think we need a better starting four, which is what I would love to get, but Buzelis will be the backup four. He will go down, which is fine, uh, but his secondary position could be small forward. We're going to figure things out, but right now, loving loving what we got we're off to a good start but now we have a little bit more and i think obviously we have enough assets to go trade for any four that we want or even a five like we're not to, i mean i could sign clax in a free agency right now and call it a day but uh i don't want to do that necessarily that's two guys from we can get like miles bridges as well or whatever but i'm gonna try to trade we have plenty of assets let's go see what other forward or you know power forward big that we can go get to pair next to chat going forward and we can maybe be a championship team as soon as next year all right as far as other bigs we're about to bring in to oklahoma city i'm looking at two guys and that is either jaron jackson on the memphis grizzlies or the other one is jared allen i feel like jared allen's probably the more realistic option i can see the Cavs eventually moving jared allen uh to uh side evan mobley to the center if they wanted to go with that direction obviously they'd want a guy that would help them win now though if they're going to do this so unfortunately Lou Dort is going to be included in this trade and then obviously we have to include other assets to convince them that hey you can go ahead and do this trade and feel good about it so Ujman Dang and then Kenneth Williams I feel like is a guy they would probably covet maybe Kenneth Williams over Ujman Dang Kenneth Williams can be a guy that can help them right away and then uh, obviously we got to entice them with first round picks because I don't think the you know the Cavs are just going to go ahead and move on from Jared Allen just for Lou Dort and Kenneth Williams but like two first uh, and then maybe we threw in maybe like one more young player, maybe the other Jalen Williams. I don't know if that's going to upset some people, but I think this would be enough for the Cavs to say, okay, we'll move on from Jared Allen, uh, which wait, did they say no to that? No. Wow. They did say no. That's actually crazy. I'm surprised. Um, I'll throw Zach Eady in. I don't, I mean, we'll throw a, another first 76ers top five protected. I'm surprised they're still saying no to this. That's actually kind of crazy. Um, try this again. Rockets for, okay. So let's say we remove this one and then i mean do we have to include another good player i guess wow jared allen i thought it'd be a lot easier to get but i was totally wrong okay so jared allen right now is not looking like it's gonna be possible maybe we remove kenneth Williams from ujman dang i still don't agree to that wow okay and i'll throw a first wow jared allen i thought would be so much easier to get but i was totally wrong okay jared allen right now is not someone they're going to be moving you know willing to move on from which actually might be okay because what we could do is just going to next season like this. I am going to sign a better backup five though. Uh, so give me Isaiah Hardenstein, a guy that can help us next year. We'll sign Isaiah Hardenstein. We still could just sign a power forward of free agents if you wanted to. Like Tobias Harris would be fine. Wood, Obi Toppin. Again, Claxton was an option, but I'm cool with just signing like Hardenstein on it good there. And then we could sign Ubre, Sadiq Bay. Sadiq Bay could slide down to the floor if we wanted to go that route, which actually Sadiq Bay, he's like elite and. I actually might just sign Sadiq Bay and call it good because he actually progresses like crazy and uh, we wouldn't have to trade for anybody. So give me Sadiq Bay. 
he might even go up in overall once we go to player progression so I'm gonna slide him down the four he does go up or go down quite a bit but we'll work with it so 76 overall let's go to player progression and let's see what this is about to look like so now we're gonna have shay up chet's up to a 91 which is exactly what i wanted uh jalen williams 84 and then case wall 78 uh sneak bay did not wait where is Sadiq bay he is a 78 so i can work with that worst case scenario we use him in a con we use him in a trade so i'm not too upset by signing Sadiq bay depth is phenomenal asset pool is still very much open try for jared allen didn't work i think uh we leave our options open at the trade deadline though with uh whatever else we bring in so mikhail great first get love it signs Sadiq bay as well let's go look at this rotation going into next season and uh yeah so we got to cut three players though so unfortunately uh we're going to cut uh Mitchich, 100 we're going to cut you uh we're also going to cut uh i guess we got to cut aaron wiggins probably and then buzelis pokoshevsky galen williams mm, uh, which i don't know who to cut um I guess we're going to cut Trey Mann. I don't feel great about it, but if we're going to roll with Case Wallace as a backup point guard, then we don't really need Trey Mann anymore. Packers are going to let us fourth overall. We're a four and a half pace in space already. I mean, we could probably be four and a half in a lot of places, but we'll leave it at pace and, pace and space. Uh, so rotationally, we're going to go nine-man rotation. We're going to have Shea, Mikel, Jalen Williams, Sneak Bay, Chet. Obviously, starting four, starting or upgrading at, with another big would be phenomenal. Lou Dor off the bench, Case Wallace off the bench, and Isaiah Harnstein, Isaiah Joe. Really good depth, really good team. I will most likely see you guys at the trade deadline with the finishing trade to, you know, put the best pieces around Shea and Chet, which also, by the way, I want to make sure of something. Jay shot tendency is exactly where I want it to be, but I want Chet's to be really high as well. Jim Williams don't need him to shoot that much. Mikel, same thing. He can be like a 79, and I'm cool with that. So Shea and Chet lead us to the promised land. But I said, I'll see you guys at the trade deadline, most likely. I wonder if the Cavaliers are willing to talk about Jarrett Allen now. Uh, they are selling. Obviously, I could go for Evan Mobley as well. But, man, Evan Mobley and Chet would be a lot of fun. But uh, I don't know. I don't think the Cavs are just going to move off from Evan Mobley, obviously. So we're going to talk about Jarrett Allen. I think he still makes a ton of sense for the Cavs to potentially move off of. So um, I'm probably going to have to have... I mean, Sadiq Bay's contract might get it done. Sadiq Bay can be in here. And then we can throw whatever else. Like, Buzelis could go in there if we need to, you know, need to throw him in here or whatever else Buzelis. i don't know if i want to throw him in here for jared allen necessarily but uh we'll try so we'll go isaiah mobley i know it's going to hurt you to trade evan mobley's brother but we get a monty bates in this trade i guess lar protected heat pick clippers pick uh sadiq bay ujman dang for jared allen to first they agree we get jared allen so we couldn't get him last year but we got him now uh we can move chet to the four he could definitely play that for us he is a nice little unicorn so now jared allen and chet can share the front court so now you have Shea, Mikel, Jalen Williams, Chet, and Jared Allen. I don't know if the Thunder are going to use their assets to make like win now moves. Um, Sam Presti's MO obviously has been to build through the draft and it's worked really well for them. So wouldn't be surprised. I don't know what they're going to do with all the draft picks because obviously they can't sign everybody. But like, I again, I don't know what they're going to do with all these picks. But I think obviously getting like Jared Allen, Mikel next to this team would be amazing. Probably not going to happen, obviously. But uh, we're off to a great start. Obviously at 37 and 14, we're going to go ahead He's some way in this season, and we'll see how he finished out, but pretty much expecting a championship this year. So this is pretty much exactly what I wanted. Chet Holmgren wins MVP, 25-13, three, a steal, three blocks. Absolutely amazing. Obviously, uh, 50, 40, sorry, 46% from the field, 96% from the free throw line, and 37% from three. Absolutely amazing. You love to see it. Also wins most improved, no surprise there. Make sure y'all be first team. I would love to see Shea on these, and he is. I was about to say, I would love to see Shea on one of these teams, and Chet should be on an all-defensive first team, and he absolutely is. Shea and Chet, love to see both of them on here, and then here's all-defensive second team. So, uh, we are the first seed in the Western Conference. If we take a look at the player stats, 25 from Chet, 22 and a half from Shea, 18 from Mikel Bridges, uh, 15 from Jalen Williams, and 13 and 10 from Jared Allen. You know, I just thought about this in my head, but a banger video would be to get, like, Chet, Victor Webb and Yama, um, Evan Mobley, like all the unicorns on the same team and just see what 2K would do with it. I have no idea. Just kind of a video or just kind of an idea I thought in my head. Uh, imagine Vic, Chet, Mobley, Porzingis maybe. Like I wonder what that team would do in the simulation. It'd be kind of funny. Uh, but Josh Giddy's up to an 86 in Brooklyn. But uh, obviously we're not focused on them. They're in the playoffs on the other side. It would be fun if we played them in the finals, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So the Timberwolves in round one, obviously I'm expecting to go and win a championship this year. Uh, the Thunder and their own right are always good without me using them. And we sweep the Mendoza Timberwolves. And now get the Lakers who beat us last year. 
They no, la no longer have LeBron, but they have Kawhi Leonard instead. So, somebody come around against them, and we are going to beat them in five. And now we get the Houston Rockets. We had their draft pick, which we took Buzelis with. They have Amon Thompson, Jabbar, Brooks, Jalen Green, Fred Van Vliet, and Shingoon still. And we are going to sweep them. Joe Holmgren is your Western Conference Finals MVP. 30 and a half, 11 rebounds, three steals, and then two and a half blocks, which is great. And we get the Celtics. So, do we win a championship is the question. They're up 1-0. They're up 2-0. to zero. So far, not going our way. But we could potentially win by coming back from 3-1. to one. We'll see. Uh, it says give one minute to Shea. Probably should have listened to that. But let's see if we can squeak this win out. It's going to be close, but we're going to lose to the Celtics. So we make it to the finals, but we fall short. Not a big deal. Obviously, we're a good team. Uh, player progression is going to prove uh, above all, most likely. We're probably going to have a lottery pick from somebody here. I don't know. Actually, we don't this year. So that's interesting. Spurs won. Wow, Spurs have one and two. Don't know if there's some protection of that Hornets pick. There most likely is, but it's fine. I'm not even going to bother. Maybe the Spurs can give me some competition next year. Um, obviously I could move on from Mark, but I'm going to keep him. I think Mark's been a great coach for Oklahoma city. So let's go ahead and stick him and keep him around. We'll keep him around here. And then we'll just basically fill out the rest of this. And then we're probably not going to do too much this off season. I mean, we might have a little bit of, we're going to probably have to resign somebody. I imagine. I don't know if there is going to be anybody. I know Josh Giddy obviously would have had to been resigned this off season, but he's no longer here. We might have some late picks. We have 25. Uh, I'm not really too worried about it. 2k take whatever you want. We got Connie Carr. We got Cerrone as well. And I'll not worry about the other two. Uh, Zach Eady, I'll accept. We'll accept these three, obviously. And then qualifying offers, Mobley and Amani Bates. Uh, two guys I'm not like absolutely sweating on bringing back. And then free agency, Isaiah Joe. I think I want to bring him back. So we're going to bring back Isaiah Joe. And that gives us actually some money left over. So we could probably fill out this bench. Although we have to be aware that uh, next year, we're going to have to obviously make some uh, extensions. So like Chet. A Cal even on a one-year deal. So we got to keep that in mind. So front court or back court, I should say, is totally fine. Mikel, Isaiah, Joe, Che, Casey Wallace. That's great. Jalen Williams, Lou Dort works for me. Uh, we have Chelm Grant and Buzelis. He could be the guy next year. We have Jalen Williams at the five. I think we go ahead and get a better backup five. And we should be golden. So either Nas Reed, Mo Wagner. I feel like I get Cap Capella way too much, which is why I don't want to get him. Zubach, on the other hand... Just bring him in to like a one-year deal. I don't know if I can sign him long-term just because obviously money next year might matter. Although it may not matter. We might just win a championship next year and that might be the end of the video. So player progression though. Uh, Chet's up to 94, which is absolutely beautiful. Wanted him to keep progressing. He's doing just that. Wallace is up. Buzelis is up. And, uh, you know, Mikel, Jalen Williams, and Jared Allen say the same, which sucks. But they're good enough, you know, support players. That's not that big of a deal. So we're going to next year. Man, it would be obviously awesome if we could win like 70, 70 games next year because I don't think it's totally out of realm of possibility. Power ring is going to land us first. Five, no, not five-star proficiency. It would have been amazing, but no. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead. And then Jared Allen has to be resigned too if you want to keep him. So uh, most likely we'll stop the contract extension deadline. I might just show you that after the season though. Uh, regardless, I will see you guys at the end of this season 100%. Don't plan on stopping at the deadline. The team is already really good. No need to, you know, make more moves. So this year, not Chet Holmgren wins MVP. It's actually Shea instead. 27 and 10. Cooper Flag rookie of the year on the Spurs. So Cooper Flag and Wibben Yama is fun. Uh, six man goes to Casey Wallace. Joel Embiid defensive player. Most approved goes to Hendricks. John Morant coach player. And yeah, almost 170 games. We win 69 instead. Jason Jones executive. So disappointing, but it is what it is. Shea, uh, all NBA first team. Chet still makes an all NBA team, which is great. And then. Uh, do we get Chet? Shea makes an offensive first team, and Chet makes an offensive second team. So we'll take that. First team in the West. I'm hoping we just win a championship this year. I did extend Shea Gilders Alexander. I extended Mikel Bridges. I extended uh, the other Jalen Williams. And then I also extended Lou Dort. So uh, Chet's going to have to be paid, obviously. But I'm hoping that doesn't even matter. I just want to end this video on a championship right here. So let's see if that can be the case. Boston beat us last year in the finals. We get the uh, Suns in round one. They still have Nurk, Durant, uh, Beal, Booker. Some might curve around against them. They are the eighth seed, but anything's possible. We beat them. Now we get the Denver Nuggets, who have Jamal Murray, Brown, Porter, Aaron Gordon, and Jokic. And they brought in John Collins. They have Jacoby Walter, Julian Strother, and Peyton Watson. So solid team in Denver. Nothing to sleep on. Let's see if we can beat them, though. And uh, we are too much to handle. We take care of them. And now we get the Lakers, who we did beat last year. It looks like they might have Fred Van Vliet now. I'm pretty sure they didn't have him last year, but they still have Kawhi AD. I mean... Uh, the older the roster gets, I think, it, I mean, Kawhi Leonard, uh, this is Joe Comer's share scenario, though. So, like, the regression isn't too crazy in this one. It's, like, no regression almost, which is a little more realistic anyway, because 2K's regression would be crazy. Like, Paul George falls off a cliff. 
um and some of these guys don't just fall off like that but hopefully we can beat them and we're gonna be in a tough series with them but we're gonna go up three to two and we beat them in six we're in the finals we get to play lebronto the raptors who have luke Kennard, barnes lebron siakam yaka portal interesting team in toronto we lost to the celtics last year let's beat them this year man game one one to zero which by the way if i didn't show the player stats which i'm pretty sure i did but let me just go through it again so uh yeah pretty solid we got game one we got game two and game three goes to toronto three to one no sweat we beat them in five and just like that we win a championship shea is your finals mvp so that's gonna how we uh in this video the thunder absolutely did not need me but i wanted to talk about chet and how good the man has been man uh the thunder absolutely hit on this pick all goes one and he's been great in orlando and orlando's on their own hot streak right now uh there's a lot of young fun exciting teams right now which is great for the nba uh, i'm curious to see if the thunder ever make a win now move it doesn't feel like they're going to but regardless this still was a fun video nonetheless obviously not the most realistic in the world which is funny because at the end you know if you're new around here you're like this man isn't realistic at all what's he talking about at the beginning most of the time i am so this one may be a little off the rails but it was for fun hope you guys enjoyed it. i'll see y'all in the next video uh tomorrow i should potentially have a 10-year expansion rebuild uh you guys sound like it would be interested in that uh if i get time to record it if not i'll do something else so thank you guys for watching see you on the next one this is crushables i'm saying peace thank you guys so much for watching make sure you click here to watch another video that i know you'll love